This week, Leathernecks at Tarawa. Get all your tanks ashore, Captain Langer. Yes, Major. The Cannonball, China Girl, Colorado, Charlie and Condor. All of C Squadron got ashore. Good. Go in and blast anything and everything in your way. We've got to clear the beach for the men. Yes, Excuse sir. me, Captain. Well? The lieutenant says the cannonball's radio is knocked out. To the hell with the radio. Tell the squadron to get underway. We're going in. Yes, sir. Good luck, Langer. Thank you, sir. Corporal. Yes, sir. Have you established radio contact with the flagship? Yes, sir. Then inform the general that the first wave has landed on Tarawa and is advancing inland as per plan. Resistance has been heavy and casualties severe. This is Richard W. Johnston of the United Press speaking. I was with that first wave of Marine veterans to make a landing on Tarawa. How any of us got ashore alive, I'll never know. Many of our landing boats were blown out of the water by the murderous fire of the Japanese land batteries, still firmly entrenched despite the most concentrated bombardment by our sea and air forces ever seen in this area. The bay was filled with shattered men and machines. But all along the shore, I could see the battle-hardened leathernecks, many of them veterans of Guadalcanal, and other Solomon sorties, inching along on their bellies, oblivious to the hot lead raining all about them. Many lay sprawled face down on the sands, never to rise again. Enemy dead were everywhere. It was apparent from the start that it was going to be a battle of extermination. I crawled inland a hundred yards or so to where Major Crow had set up temporary command headquarters. Well, Johnson, I hope you've brought a couple of empty typewriter spools with you to throw at the nips. <laughs> this place is lousy with snipers. Well, so that's why you're lugging that shotgun around. Uh -huh. I thought you might have flushed a cover of quail back here. Down. They're back. Where? I don't see anything. Be quiet. And keep your eye on Daniel Boone. Well, see what I mean? Well, you got him, Major. Look at that Jap dangling from his harness in that coconut palm. Sure. Look around and you'll see a couple of more of them. Say, you're right. A one-man army, huh? Oh, this is bush laid stuff compared to what that tank squadron is doing farther inland. Have you heard from Captain Langer and the rest? Yes, our radio picks them up on battle frequency. But those big guns tell me all I want to know. Well, so that's what that is, our tank cannon. Mm -hmm. I notice the sound's getting farther and farther away all the time. Yes, yeah, C squadron's still advancing. Oh. Well, let's go inside and see if we can tune in on them. Uh, Corporal. Yes, sir. You still get their signal? Yes, sir. The China girl's trying to raise Captain Langer now, sir. He can't. The cannonball's radio has been knocked out. Well, Captain Langer isn't in the cannonball anymore, sir. While what? you were outside, I heard him tell Lieutenant Bowser the cannonball took a shell and was knocked into a bomb crater. He's transferred to the Colorado. Hmm. Well, turn that up a little and let's hear what and they're that saying. That was the last of the condor. Charlie was blown out, too, Captain. More of a crew were wounded and lying out there in foxhole somewhere. Radio the base in the approximate location, Ed, and ask him to send out stretcher bearers. Over. China girl calling Blue Leader. Come in, Blue Leader. Blue Leader in, China girl. I heard you talking to Colorado. What's the map reference? N-35, Skipper. Looks like they're pretty bad off. We'll take care of them. You and China girl proceed according to plan. Am I understood? Message understood, Skipper. Good hunting to you all. Good luck. Over and off. Well, the boys are having a time of it. Yes, Langer reported earlier that some of those Jap pill boxes have concrete walls 25 feet thick. Mm. On top of that, an equal thickness of coconut logs and coral. No wonder our naval guns and aerial bombs didn't blast them out. Uh, nothing less than a direct hit would do that. Well, what's the answer, Major? There's only one way. Go in and get them. You mean rush a gun emplacement with fixed bayonets? Uh, hardly. Hand grenades down the entrance would do it, though. But they'd never get near enough. Langer's tanks could. Flamethrowers could. And that's the way it was done. That, plus some accurate bombing by our Navy and Air Force, which they were able to do with pinpoint precision, only because our men on the ground paid with their lives to hunt out the strong points and relay the information back. I made my way back to the beach, where a temporary field hospital had been set up behind a sand barricade, the only natural shelter on the whole barren atoll. The place was swarming with our wounded, and the medical men worked feverishly over them. I set up my typewriter on an empty ammunition case and began typing out my notes. Hey, could I grab a buck from you, buddy? Oh, sure, Mac. Here. Where'd they get you? I don't know exactly. Feels like I'm sorting, too. Better not try to talk. The doc will be along in a minute and fix you up. Inside my tune. Ah, uh, take it easy, Mac. Letter. Mail it. Please. Okay, okay. Hey, doctor. Give me a hand here. Yes? Yes, what is it? This man, his, his 
dead. Well, there's lots of others around here. I know. Doctor, can I see a minute? Well? Could you just set this arm, put a splint on it or something? I've got to get back. I'm afraid a one-armed officer wouldn't be much good out there, Lieutenant. But I've got to get now, back. please, Lieutenant. Let me care for the severely wounded first. Oh, sure, sure. I'm sorry, Doc. Where's your outfit, Lieutenant? We're over on the left flank. Oh. Trying to knock out that jab battery near the pier. It's murder to let the second wave come in against that crossfire. It'll be murder for us if they don't get here. Yeah, I guess you're right. Sarge, I think the Major has some plans for those babies. Oh, you've seen, Crow? Mm. Did you ever see anything more terrific? Stamping around, giving orders, and blasting Japs with a shotgun between times. Looks like your own men are pretty terrific, Lieutenant. Huh? The Jap batteries quit. Hey, you're right. The boys got them. They got them. Would those be our Hellcats coming in for another pass? That's it. Blowing close to the shore. Under cover, everybody. Would you care to join me in the slip trench, Lieutenant? With pleasure. Here, let me give you a hand. Right. Uh, Here we are. Here we are. Uh, say, you know where I'd rather be this afternoon? Watching the Army-Navy game? Nah. Down at Louie's. Louie's? Who's Louie? He runs a little tavern in my neighborhood on the outskirts of Chicago. Oh, I get what you mean. Gee. Wonder if the beer tastes as good as I remember. You had any of that Jap beer they captured back in the Solomon? Oh, don't mention it. I hope they brews better here at Tarawa, where they're closer to home. From the beating this place is getting, I don't think there'll be even a beer bottle left hold when it's over. Oh, damn! They got me again! Where? Here, let me look at you. Oh, in the chest. Something hit me in the chest. Could this be it? Huh? Well, I'll be. Fifty caliber shell kicked out by one of our own planes. Well, I hope it's bullets. Found a better mark. And so it went for the next three days and nights. Our casualties streamed in at an alarming rate at that beachhead hospital. The Higgins landing boats continued to pour men ashore, but it seemed to me they took back a larger number of wounded than the reinforcements they brought. Yet one by one, the enemy pillboxes were silenced, and inch by inch, those gallant, weary Marines made their way across the T-shaped atoll, mopping up. On the morning of the fourth day, I happened by Major Crow's command base. Oh, hello, Johnson. Hello. Still in one piece, I see. Yes, but from what I've seen these last few days, I'd say you and I are the only ones of the original wave that are. Oh, you're wrong there. Remember our friends Langer and Bowser, the Colorado and China girl? Are those tankers still at it? And how. Uh, since you were here last, they've knocked out the superstructure on the wharf. Killed a hundred or so Japs who came boiling out of it. Hmm. Blown up I don't know how many enemy pillboxes and ammunition dumps, too. Just uh, generally roamed around, raising the devil. Well, what do you know? Uh, Corporal. Yes, sir. See if you can't get those tank signals a little clearer, will you? Yes, sir. There's yeah, a steel it. turret down here at the end of the island. We've got to knock out right away. See anything that looks like it, Captain? Well, if that's it, moving along behind that row of palms down there, our steel turret is a Jap tank. Yeah. Yeah, I see it now. Well, what are we waiting for? You take the high road and I'll take the good old nipple before you. Well, the boys seem to be in pretty good spirits, huh? After 72 hours straight, that's incredible. Shh. Listen, they're talking again. Looks like you're in the best position, Lieutenant. Want to take a shot? I'll cover. Do I? Watch this, Captain. Easy now. Easy. A bullseye, Ed. She's burning. Yeah. There come a couple of a crew out of the turret. They're running for that low place over on your side. Yeah, I see them. Just let me wheel around here a bit. There. Brother, they hit the jackpot that time. And how? Those chaps ran into an ammunition dump, Captain. You've blown up the whole blooming works. Yeah, that was a beautiful sight. Son of a gun if it wasn't. Oops. Here come our infantry, Captain. Off to your right. Yeah, they seem to have found something interesting in that tunnel over there. Uh, let's go over and have a look, shall we? Right. Well, from other reports I've received, Johnson, I'd say you're sitting in on that dragon's last stand on Tarawa. I hope so. It's been a tough Wait a minute. Deal. They come again. What did the infantry commander tell you, Ed? He says there are about 50 Japs crowded into that exit tunnel. Just the job for the Colorado. We'll maneuver up to the entrance. Like so. Point our cannon down the mouth. And whoosh! You can go home now, son. Show's all over. And it was all over except burying the dead. The Marines had captured Tarawa, but they had paid the highest price in dead and wounded in the history of the Corps. Of the 3,000 odd who made the original assault, all but about 200 of them stained that barren atoll with their blood. For about half that number, 
Their graves will be the shifting sands of that lonely pinpoint in the Pacific. It was a terrible price to pay, but it was their job, and those Marines performed it bravely and unflinchingly. Tarawa was a little battle, as battles go in these days of global war, but as the symbol of the unquenchable spirit of free men everywhere, it will live as long as man cherishes the right to walk with dignity, unafraid. Like Richard W. Johnston, United Press war correspondents are on every battlefront to bring you fast, accurate, and colorful eyewitness stories of history in the making. Armed only with their typewriters, these veteran observers live with the troops and go into action with them. That is why their dispatches reflect so faithfully the sound and fury of battle, the actual conditions our fighting men face. It is in tribute to our armed forces that we present these dramatized versions of on-the-scene stories by United Press correspondents. We will bring you another thrilling story of these soldiers of the press soon. Be sure to listen. And listen for United Press news on the air. Look for United Press dispatches in your favorite newspaper. They are your guarantee of the world's best coverage of the world's biggest news. <laughs>